heaven above. The Holy Spirit sits on the throne. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. In the morning, early in the morning, in the morning, I will rise and praise the Lord. In the morning, early in the morning, in the morning, I will rise and praise the Lord. Let's open our mouth and begin to thank the Lord for what he has done this morning. And the like is a brain. He mama ran the like we and the like. He's a baba ran the like we and the like. He braska baba ran the like and the like. He baba ran the robo sandele bushendele. He break up a panda like. Zima roko sondoros. Jesus, we are saying that you are Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Beloved, we are praying this morning. We are praying this morning. We are asking the Lord to come and take control this morning. And we are asking him to purify us from every unrighteousness to forgive us our sins and to wash us in his blood. Let's begin to pray right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, my Lord, my God, that you will purify us with your blood, that you wash us in your blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, 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 Wash us, O oh Lord. Cleanse us, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, come and take control this morning, this afternoon, whatever time it is here. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to worship the Lord very briefly. And we can zoom into the word of God. Amen. At this time, I humbly ask that we all go down on our knees as we give glory and honor and praise to the King of Kings, to the Yam that I am, wherever you are. Humbly go down on your knees as we worship our Baker and our Creator. Just lift your voice and begin to worship the Lord wherever you are. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Begin to worship the Lord. 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 We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor and adoration. Power and might belong to you. Power and might belong to you. Power and might belong to you. 
We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Papa Take your glory, Jesus. Yes, you deserve. You deserve all the glory and praise and honor and adoration. We honor your holy name. We bless your holy name. We worship your holy name. I am on the gods, Papa. There is no one like you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's be silent before the Lord. As we meditate upon his goodness, his greatness, how awesome he is. In Jesus' name we've worshipped. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Heather, is that you who has logged in? Oh, Sister Mavis. Edda, is that you or Sister Mary? Mavis. <laughs> is that Sister Mavis? Yes. Oh, okay. I thought it's Edda Hayford. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our sister Joanna has a testimony to give, so we will allow her briefly before the word of God comes. Amen. Amen. Sister Joanna, over to you. Her sister will say it in Chi. I will say it in English when she's done. Okay. Her sister wants to thank the Lord this morning. She wants to thank the Lord. This afternoon, I believe it's afternoon at the end. Is, it's that, is, morning, it, morning. is it morning? Yeah, it's still morning. Yeah. It's still morning. Yeah. Yeah, she's in Europe, so uh, London, I believe. So it's still morning over there. She said it is the Lord who woke her up in the morning. And so she cannot go and praise uh, any human, but only God alone that she can Give thanks to. Amen. Yeah. Our sister want to sing to glorify God. I'm sorry, wo. Thank you. Amen. So the the uh, song says the Lord is great, he's awesome. And she will lift him up because his works because are marvelous. His ways are awesome. Amen. So the words in the song is just lifting the Lord up. It is praising his holy name. It is honoring his holy name. 
for who he is and what he is in our lives. Amen. 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 Uh, our elder is still not here, but the word of God still remains the same. Amen. Amen. And so as every day the Lord gives us his word, we're going to share some of the words that the Lord has been giving us each day. Amen. Amen. Please take your Bibles to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. I read from verse 1 going. The same day went Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship and sat. The whole multitude stood on the shore, and he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprang up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them but other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit some a hundred fold and some sixty fold and some thirty fold who had ears let him hear and the disciples came and said unto him why speaketh thou them in parables He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seen. They seeing, see not, and hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For these people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, beloved in Christ, like uh, many times we have heard the Lord Jesus when he was preaching to the people. He will always say, let those who have ears, let them hear. And many times, those who have read any of the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we, you realize that every time Jesus is preaching, multitude gathered to listen. Multitude. It means you cannot even count them. There are many. They gathered to hear what he had to say about the kingdom of God. Just as in our time, 
there are multitude that gather in churches in various, in various places to say and claim that they are Christians. They've gone to church and apparently or probably to worship the Lord. That is what was happening in the time of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ during his uh, uh, earthly ministry. Many will gather before him. Many will gather at his feet to listen. And at a time, he will say that many are called, but few are chosen. And even some have doubts that why would he call many and why would he choose few of it? Now, as we are reading this parable, the mystery behind that will unravel or will be known to us. Why am I saying that? He said that he, as he explained the mystery behind the parable of the sower, he said, many do hear the word of the kingdom, meaning the word of God, but they do not understand. And because they do not understand, the wicked one means the devil. The wicked one comes in and he come and take away even that seed which got into the heart of that person. The wicked one comes in and take it. And he said that this, this is what represents those people, that seed that fell on the wayside. This morning, I'm talking to you about the preparation or the condition of your heart in the presence of God. The preparation or the condition of your heart in the presence of God. Maybe you are new in Christ. Maybe you are not. Maybe you have served God six months, two months, three months. Maybe you've been in Christ. You, you've been going to church for ages, 10 years, 15 years. 13 years. Maybe you were even born into church. Maybe your daddy is a minister or an elder or a deaconess of a church. And so you grew up uh, and you, you, you just realized that you have to be in church and you are. Yet, you may not understand why. What even brought you to that church? What even brought you into the kingdom? Meaning into Christianity. And so because your mind, your heart is not conditioned as to why you are in the kingdom for such a time like this, why you were born into the church for such a time like this, because many people are born into Islam, into other religion, that they have no choice. They grew up knowing just, you know, Islam, or they grew up knowing other religion that does not believe in Jesus Christ, maybe Hindu or Buddhist, uh, uh, worshiping Buddha or Baal or any other gods. Maybe they were born and their parents were voodoo priests. And so all that they, they know is the idol that they are serving. Uh, to be, and he or she also is practicing to become a voodoo priest. But this morning, the Lord is asking you, whatever time it is at your, at, at your end, on what condition did you come to Christ? What is the condition of your heart when you accepted the word? Have you come to fully understand why you are serving the Lord Jesus? Or a brother told you about heaven and hell message and you think, oh, if I don't join this set of people or that people, then I may not... Uh, Make heaven or Jesus is going to be angry with me. Are you serving the Lord because you know his second coming is imminent? Or because out of fear for whatever revelation somebody told you or out of fear of a dream that you had? What is the condition of your heart? The Lord is asking. Because until we gain understanding, until we gain full understanding, the reason you have come to Christ, the reason you are serving God, then the word of God will come. Thousands of messages will come. But because of the condition of your heart, 
because the understanding is not there. You will hear the word of God, but you may never understand. And so such are the people that because they do not really have a full understanding why they are in Christ, why they must hear the word of God to change something in them. They, be, they will be moving from one church to the other, one place to the other, one man of God to the other, one prayer line to the other. And many times, these people have double mind because they are, ever, they are always receiving, but they never understand. So they see that went, uh, that fell on that roadside. That seed is um, what would be the proper, uh, it is vulnerable because anything can happen to this seed. On the road, animals walk on road, roadside. If you go to Africa, you see the goats, the, the, the cattle, the chickens, snakes, everywhere, every, every animal you can think of. You see them, maybe you can see a tiny road, you see all animals. And then human beings also walk on the road. So if a seed has fallen on the road, if it's not that tiny, that it becomes insignificant and it's something that is noticeable. If a little baby that is uh, playing along that roadside can pick that seed up, crush it, you know, and throw it somewhere. A dog might notice this seed, maybe step on it or even chew it up. And that is why the, the Lord is saying that because it fell on the roadside, because the understanding wasn't there, the, the wicked one, who is Satan, comes in quickly and steal it away. So if your heart, if the condition of your heart is just like the roadside, maybe you heard something that, you know, like I said, maybe a revelation by somebody and uh, fear gripped you. And so you have rushed to be with the body of Christ. But you, you have not fully come to understanding of your salvation or they need to serve the Lord, then you are just like that seed on the roadside. Anything can rob you. Anything. Anything can crush you. Anything can take you away. You are not stable in your mind. You, you have not fully come to a, a complete understanding why you rush and join that, that set of people, that ministry, that place. And so you'll be listening to here, 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 and there and never perceiving anything, and never catching anything, never knowing any revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, there'll be no true encounter. And so many have been in church so many years. They don't have the Holy Spirit baptism. Neither have they received his impartation or even the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the condition of the heart, the reason why they joined the the, the group, the reason why they joined the church, the reason why they are in that, that ministry has not fully been understood. The understanding is completely not there. The understanding is fully not there. So the Lord is asking you this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whatever time you, you'll be listening to this, what is the condition of your heart? And what brought you into the Christendom? That is something that you have to do so searching. You need to sit your heart down. Sit yourself down. And the spirit within you is a testimony or can testify that soul A or soul B, this is the reason why you join. And so you have an answer, a very clear answer why you came to Christ. And if that understanding is not there, beloved, the word of God said that in all thy getting, Get wisdom and get understanding. We are in the season where you cannot afford to be moving when the body of Christ is moving, coming with them when they are coming, praising the Lord when they are praising, but you have not fully understood what you are doing. Because all that you are doing would be in vain. All that you are doing would be in vain if you never come to a full understanding 
Everything that you you say that maybe I've told for the kingdom, maybe I was paying tight faithfully, maybe I heard about tight so I was paying. Even when you heard about tithing and you pay, but without any understanding, you will pay it in an unworthy manner without understanding what even you must do before you pay your tithe. What even you must do before you sow seed. If the understanding is not there, you will do things anyhow. I will take a practical example like someone who has gone mad, cuckoo, will be our body. The person doesn't have any understanding of his environment or what exactly he's supposed to do. So even if he's naked, they don't care. Even if they are naked, they don't care. All that they know is that whatever is driving them, whatever force that is driving them makes them do things. Whatever they are seeing in their eyes and their spiritual realm, you know, is, is controlling them. It's controlling them. Today, what is the condition of your mind? What did you hear that got you into this ministry? What did you hear that brought you under the feet of Jesus Christ to listen? Many followed Christ here and there, but they had a reason why they were following Christ. Many followed him because of the food that he was able to turn a small meal into. Many followed him because of the healing. Many followed him because probably he was looking handsome to them and they were curious to know who is this handsome, cute, young man who has so much power and is able to do all these things. And so those who are filled with the spirit of lust and everything, they probably were following Christ because he looks too cute and too handsome and all the cuteness in the, in the healing, they just, they just admire him. What is the condition of your heart? Why are you part of the body of Christ? This is something you must search within yourself and know. Because if you do not gain understanding, the wicked one will come and sift you. By the time you realize, you might think that, oh, I am going to church here. I belong to this ministry or that uh, uh, non-denomination. But by the time you realize, the enemy has just sifted you, taking you back into the world, doing whatsoever, because you went there but never understood anything. You listened but never really got to understand why they are even telling you to do what you do. Many people have heard about holiness messages and all that they have got to know is that, hey, am I dressed this way or that way? Beloved, as I said in my previous sermon, that is just the initial thing. Taking away the satanic properties is just initial thing to do. It is not the true qualification to make heaven. All those are satanic properties that weaken you spiritually. So when you get rid of it, praise the Lord. It helps you to, to know the Lord more and get clear understanding. Because that which oppresses you in your body, which you yourself invited in your body, has been cleared off. But that is not our central theme or message. No. For the grace of God has appeared to all men, teaching us to avoid all manner of ungodliness. When you come to verse 19, verse 20, it says, But he that received the seed into stony places, the same is he that heareth the word, and on with joy received it, yet had had he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. By and by he is offended. Here, the Lord also explained the seed that fell on stony ground. A stony ground. We all know how stones look like. We all know how rocks look like. A rock has no spaces between them. When you see a rock, there's no space in or around it. You know, they are all hard surfaces that you are going to see. A stone or a rock has hard surfaces. And so there's nothing that is penetrating into this what? Into this rock or stone. 
So the word of God, he said, when the seed falls on it, because there is no root, because it is, it is just at the surface, then it sprangs forth quickly, but it's not able to survive. It has nothing soft to hold it in. And so the root of this seed is just on the surface. The root of this seed is just on the surface of this rock. Beloved, many have also come into the body of Christ. They've joined the Christendom. Oh, I have accepted the holiness message. I have removed this and that from, from my body. I, don't, I, don't, I put on scarf to go to church. I don't wear trousers anymore. I don't do this. I don't do that. They receive this holiness message or this warning from the Lord Jesus that women must be modest in their way of doing things or men should not do this or do that. You know, all the things that the Lord spoke against, they have received it with gladness. But guess what? After they have received it with, with gladness, offenses for the sake of this word comes in. There comes, if it's a young woman, there comes a mother or a father that will attack this young lady. So do you think you are the only one serving the Lord? Why do you think you should live in a, a country like a, a, a UK and be dressing like you live in some village in, in Ghana? We are in a modern world. My daughter, why are you dressing yourself like you are from a typical village in Ghana? The Lord looks at uh, the, the, the heart of man, not the way you appear to church. Why are you looking colloquial, a cake like that, like an old woman who is going to get married to you? These are offenses in the word that you have received. As a young lady, you will see young ladies just like your type. Maybe you are in your early 20s. You will see young ladies that are in their early 20s. They are doing everything that maybe you've heard that is contrary to the word of God and the Lord is never pleased with. And then they will look at you. They will be giving you the evil eye as if you, you are crazy. It's like, look at this one. And where from this? And so you'll be in an assembly where everything or everybody will, will be doing things that is contrary to what you have come to accept. So every day that you go there, every day that you go there, you begin to doubt and question yourself. Is God really interested in me dressing this way, taking off my makeup, putting on a scarf, looking like an old woman? Then... Those, those principality, those familiar spirits who always talk in our mind, who brings the war in our mind, they'll be talking to you. So do you think you are better than these young women who have been dressing themselves properly? They call those things proper dressing. Who have been putting on everything to look cute, sexy for the young men. Which, which young man will come and marry you in this condition that you put yourself? Because men, most of these uh, young men that we see in the churches, they are interested in the, the, the young ladies with the Brazilian hair. And now you don't want to put this Brazilian hair. So who is going to marry you? Because you are still young. You will need a husband someday. You would want a, a young man, a, a, if you're a young man, you want a, a young a woman to come in and then you... you You've been preaching, if you're a young man, you've been preaching about, you know, women and their modesty or, or fornication and everything. But many of these uh, young women, they, 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 now they have their own philosophies. Hey, if you're going to buy a car, you need to test the car and make sure that the car drives good. Even they have pastors and, and so-called married counselors who are leaders of churches who tell you that, hey, you, you, you cannot just enter into marriage. You need to know yourself intimately. They are, they are polluting the minds of these young people to do that which is wrong. But you have heard of holiness. 
that without it, nobody will see the Lord. And so you don't want to involve in any premarital sex. But this young lady that you have seen wants you to test the waters. Make sure that your manhood is proper, proper for, he, for her. And this young, maybe this young man that you've met, you want, you want to test the car because that's what, now that's the mentality they have. You are a car to them. They want to test the car and make sure that it is good, it is proper for them before they will take you to the altar and they will go and stand before the man of God after having premarital sex. They will go, they will wipe their mouth clean and go and stand before the pastor and say, I know nothing. That stops me from marrying this young woman. When the Isaacs in the Bible never knew their Rebecca's until the, their dowries, their bride price were paid to their family before they were brought to them. Now, these modern day Christians, we think we are too smart. We are too wise than those, you know, those people in the Bible. Because even the Bible said that in the latter days, knowledge will increase. So we have increased in knowledge. We are too smart. Now we want to test the waters. So many youth, many of these young folks, they are practicing premarital sex before they go to the altar. And that is why divorce is on the rise. And divorce will be on the rise till Christ come. Because the, the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the sight of God. When the people in, in these modern times believe and think that they are smarter than God and they see their fellow beings as cars that they must test and drive, then the enemy has already been laid as the foundation. You lay the enemy as the foundation sleeping with that young man, doing things that is contrary to the word of God, and you take that young man to the altar that you know nothing that stops you from marrying this man. And you want God to bless the marriage to the very end. Beloved, I am here to tell all of us that the Lord God does not bless us. He does not bless wickedness. The fact that he let it rain on, on good and, and the bad doesn't mean he supports wickedness. He never supports wickedness. It is never so. For no proud, he doesn't tolerate the proud, and neither can wickedness stand in his presence. He's a holy God. Beloved, he is a holy God, and no filthiness will be entertained in his kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. And so he said, when persecution cometh because of the word, you have received the message of holiness. You are a young woman, you are a young man. And you have made up your mind that I will never engage in premarital sex to get married. But persecution will come. Satan will use that which you have purpose in your heart not to do to come and tempt you. You will have people that will come in every way. They will pretend, they will do everything that will make you think that. Even, even if you met, let them sleep with you, tomorrow they will go and pay your diary, your bride price. But as you give in to them, as you give in to them, as you give in to them, you know that you have just become sex partners. And so there are, there are so many uh, women who are there, they have little ones. And every day, they, they are praying that the man will go and do what is right by them. Why? Because they took offense in the word. Because they really didn't catch what the word of God was telling them to stand firm, even to the latter, to the last time. And so, oh, the man said, you go and marry me. And so gradually, you have three children, four, four children for the man, and no bride price will be paid. And they are in churches. These, these folks might be in the same church, giving birth, premarital, having premarital sex and giving birth out of wedlock. But there are men of God who will never condemn that, who will never talk about that, for these people to change from their wicked ways. Offenses will come. Offenses will come 
when the word of truth has come to you. And offenses may even come when the, the one who you even saw preaching that holiness to you, the enemy attack that person and make that person fall from grace and will be doing contrary to that word that they preach to you. And then you'll be like, ah, so this sister will preach holiness to me. Even look at what she's doing. Look at what I heard about him. He will take offense in the word of God. A, a, a lady called me, uh, I think the first week of this month, July. And then she said, sister, I asked her, if the Lord come today, will you make it? And then she, she said, hmm, I'm working on it. Hmm. Sister, it's not easy. A, a man of God really makes my, my faith and everything fall. And so today, even now that I'm talking to you, I have small faith in God. And I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I really want God to increase my faith. I became so, in fact, it was like they were crushing my heart. It was like something was crushing my heart. And I was like, ah. Did you go to church because of that man of God? Or is it the word of God that you went for? Did you go there to listen to the word? He said, hmm, what I heard about him. And I was like, ah, this man that I, I really, really thought, you know, he knew the truth and everything. But look at what he has done. The word of God has become offense to some people because of the vessel that was used to preach the word. Beloved, what condition is your heart when you receive the word of God? What condition is your heart? When you, when you read Matthew 23, verse 1 up to 6 thereabout, the Lord Jesus, when he was about to expose the hypocrisy of the Pharisees, he told the people that were around, he said, these Pharisees, they sit in the seat of Moses when they talk to you about the law. Just listen to the word of God, that law, that commandment that the Lord gave through Moses. But never you look at their character. Never you look at their hypocritical uh, behaviors. Never you learn from them. In fact, some people in this Christendom they have mentors. They will say that, oh, this one is my spiritual uh, father or this is my spiritual mother or whatever it is. And so if this spiritual papa is divorcing their wives and it becomes public, then this, this young man or woman who took these people as their <laughs> spiritual whatever, offense will come to them. That is where their persecution starts. That is where the enemy strikes in. Say, look, even this one that you, you thought or you think is doing the right, look at what he's doing. How much more you? You think you can survive in this Christian race? Forget. Quit, quit worshiping. Go, go and do whatever pleases you. Tribulation and persecution arises because of the word because of what they have received and who gave that word. And they are deeply offended and they are deeply moved and they are deeply saddened. Beloved, I am here to admonish all of us that we need to prepare the heart very well. We need to condition our heart to know that as I have made up my mind, to serve the Lord, as I've made up my mind to be with Christ, it is only the word of God that I look up to. It is only Jesus alone that I look up to. Jesus is my mentor, for man will fail me. Even the one who is giving me the gospel can fail me. Nobody should rely on Sister Grace or Brother Hayford or anybody in this ministry but solely depend on the Lord Jesus, who is our author and the perfecter, the finisher of our faith. I didn't die for you. The Lord is giving me the truth to speak, but that does not mean that I am over and above human being. I am just as any other ordinary person. 
your pastor, your bishop, wherever you, you worship, he's just like you. He has weaknesses just as you have weaknesses. He has his uh, shortcomings just as you have your shortcomings. Me, I know a woman of God. She's a true prophetess of God. But she, she has this attitude where when the Lord has not revealed anything to her and you are discussing, she, she, she will keep asking you questions. She wants you to even tell her to the extent of how you and your husband sleeps. This is her personal, personal behavior. This is not part of the case that the Lord, this is her personal character. She likes digging into people's personal stuff. You understand? And when the gift of God came upon her, that has no change. It is still there. And so when she got closer to me and she began to ask me questions into how I was like, mm -mm, which one is this? I'm not going to discuss that with you. Why are you asking me such a question? You know? So that is when you put your mind, your, your focus and everything, you come to trust that person so much. Beloved, there's one thing my husband told me. He said, he, he, he sat me down one day and said, baby. I said, yes, he said. The fact that that person is a man of God does not mean immediately the first day you see the person or the next day you see the person, go and tell all your secrets. If that person be a genuine man of God, the Lord will reveal that which he or she needs to know about you. Don't see any man of God. You run to the person, hey, Papa, you know, when I was a young girl, I used to have this para paralysis on me and, and my mother took, no. If that person be a genuine man of God, whatever he needs to know about you, the Lord may, in his mercy, reveal unto him. You don't have to tell all the history of your mother and your father and your great-great-grandmother to that person because you will be deeply offended when these folks fall from grace. As human as they are, as human as we all are. And so as, as for me, when... This, uh, this, my spiritual father, this or that. I don't remember saying that before. That this person is my spiritual mom or this person is my spiritual dad. Apart from my daddy, who I hold in high, uh, high regards for, because he knows the word of God. He knows, he really, really is a teacher of the gospel. Because by the time the year ends, daddy has read the, the Bible probably three, four times. And he can tell you the entire uh, book of Galatians without looking in the Bible. He can tell you everything in chapter one up to the chapter six. And so I, I but even that, even, even 2015, the Lord made me to understand, he said, even that your father, that you hold in that high regard, he's as human as you are. And when I went to Ghana, the whole lot, I wasn't there. I had not been in Ghana for probably 12 years or so. And the first time I went back, the Lord revealed so many things. That is my daddy's weakness. He has never told me on the phone before. He has, I wasn't there in his ministry. I sat both him and my mother down. The Lord had revealed everything to me. I was like, daddy, I told my mother this and this and this and this and this is what the Lord is saying. Go and ask papa if that does not happen. And my mother confronted my daddy. This and this and this is what happened. And my daddy said, yes, it did. This is what I'm talking about. And the, in fact, I wept bitterly when... He said, it's true. I went with, I was like, this is the man I hold in. And I'm not saying he's still not the man. He, he is. But the Lord showed his weaknesses to me. That I wasn't there. I did not witness. My mother even didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. My mother didn't even know. And so I'm here to tell you that offenses will come. Due to the word that you have received. Due to the people, the vessel that he came through. But the condition of the heart when you got that word will determine how you can, whether you can survive or whether you will fail. The condition, how you prepared your heart to receive the word of God will deeply or indeed show whether you took the word because of that person who spoke to you or because of the, you know, how excited you are at that time or whatever it is that made you take it. 
the seed that fell on stony places, it had no roots. Some receive the message with joy and gladness. And so when we are coming, he will come. When we are praying, he is praying. Even to the level that they will, they will receive giftings of the Holy Spirit. But somewhere along the line, offenses will come. Things, like I said previously, you will have siblings that will say, ah, so are you the only one serving God? Why must you serve God looking like, like a wretched being? And then the offenses will start coming in. The offenses will start coming because of the word, because of how you believe it, and because you have chosen to walk according to what you have believed in. Even you will have, you know, lead, lead the people in authority in the church that will offend you. That will cause offense in the word they've given you. So you, you will see that many, many uh, go astray from the gospel because an elder of the church messed them up. Because the thickness of the church messed them up one way or the other. But the condition of that heart will determine if the Lord show you that it's about time you leave that church, it will not be based on a man of God who offended you or a dickness who offended you. But it is because you have made your own decision that where I have reached in my life and in my Christian journey, it is best if I leave. And you will live peacefully without any offense in anybody. And without causing any discord or confusion in the body of Christ. For God is not the author of confusion. Again, he said, he also, he also that received the seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. And the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word. And he become unfruitful. The deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he become unfruitful because of the care of this world and that's why we are preaching about the condition of your heart like i said from the early time i said many were following christ jesus because of the food Adrianino. Because we heard many times that he took uh, uh, five loaves of bread, two fishes, he prayed on it, blessed it, and then people got food. And so probably a uh, sister or brother, when they say, hey, this man is he, he's not just preaching, he's also providing his food. So you better come if you are hungry. So that at the end of the uh, word, you will get food to eat. And so that person that followed because of the food, that person who came because of Whatever it is that they are seeking for, after that, then what? The word has no root in them. The word has no root in them. See, there was a point that some people came. This says, these people are looking for you. He said, you are looking for me because of the food that I gave you. This says, in fact, <laughs> I like the man Jesus. Oh, she had cut it to seven, Papa. <laughs> Jesus. He will give it to you. He will tell you the truth up, you know, outright, without any fear or intimidation. And that's why he was able to <laughs> tell the Pharisees their hypocrisy, you know, their secret. Jesus was always frank. And that's why the Bible says that there was no deception in him. He, if it is white, he will tell you it is white. If it is blue, he said it is blue. Men, those folks that were looking for Jesus, Jesus told them point blank, you are following me because of the food I gave you the other time. But there is a better food than this one that you took. That word of God that I'm giving to you, that is life and spirit. That is the one that you must properly get so that you will never hunger or test. Why are you following Christ? Why are you following Jesus, beloved? Why are you going to church? Why are you in that ministry? What is the reason? Is it because your son was sick, your daughter was sick, and you got healed, and so now you, you, you feel obliged? You, you, you feel that now you have to be in this church till you die? Maybe you were sick. 
that's why you, you went there and now you are looking uh, much better. And so you have, to, you have to die in that church. Is that the reason why you are following Christ? Because you got healed? Or because you want to be saved? The seed on the tongues. We all know how tongues are in Kasei. And what was said is Yasifa. Maybe you've come to Christ. Maybe there were open air service and you heard Jesus says, if you don't have children, you come, Jesus will give you children. Beloved, I'm here to tell you that even before Jesus came on this earth, when Jesus came, if before or after he came, people were conceiving. People were using natural means of getting pregnant, going to fetish. They were doing all kinds of things. When he came, it didn't change. And so that is not the reason why Christ came. He didn't come so you have children. Christ did not come so that you, you have husbands and wives. So the cares of this world, you are a spinster, you are a bachelor, you are looking for a, a, a wife or a husband. Oh, this church, they have a lot of the young folks, the young men. So when I go there, maybe through the message of God, Maybe a young man will, you know, a young man will notice me and they will marry me. Is that, your, is that the reason why you went to church? Is that why you are in that church? Is that why you are in that ministry? Because there, there are a lot of uh, young men in that ministry. Or there are a lot of young women in that ministry. So you need to go there so that you can find you a wife. Trust me. Jesus said, or the word of God says that the enemy disguises himself as an angel of light. So you are going there, you are seeing these young uh, women who are dressing in a holiness manner. But I tell you what, the marine, uh, that mommy, what I, that marine, those people, they are able to pretend. Get a body, get a human body who has availed themselves, possess them, pretend in the church, dress holy. You know, put on all the things that you, a young man, you don't want to see in those uh, women who are into fashion, and will pretend to the to the point that they can even rise up to be prayer warrior, because I know what I'm talking about, of a, of a, uh, a man of God who was sharing his testimony. He was he was married to a mami water, a marine spirit who came in a body form, who took a body, came into the church. Pretended dressing holy. Holy means, you know, if it is a skirt, the skirt is sweeping the floor. The skirt is not up to the tie. The breast is covered. All this part is covered, covering the head. He was part of the prayer warrior team, the prayer tower team. If this woman prays, the pastor said, if you hear this woman pray, you will marvel. It, it's like the heaven is coming down. Not knowing he, she was sent solely to come and trap him so that he will marry her. They've been seeking him long time because his, his father was in their court and the father is dead and the, 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 Lucifer needs him to replace the father and they had to send a woman from the marine world pretending to be a holy woman. Beloved, what is the condition of your heart? Are you following Christ because there's a situation that you want Christ to solve. After he solved it, then what? The cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches. There are some people, they are in Christ. All that they pray about, God, I want money. God, I want car. I was listening to one, one young man who was, who was making a joke. He said, God, I, I want Lamborghini. Lord, I want Benz. He said, God, make wild. <laughs> if you don't bless me, that the other one that that other man will bless me meaning satan will, he'll go to satan so that satan will bless him when i hear when i heard that prayer on whatsapp i laughed my ribs out i was like look and that is the prayer of many there are so many women in the church god give me husband oh that is all they pray about that is all their prayer if you ask them pray about something oh i need and i'm not saying that you shouldn't uh uh take uh, your petition to the Lord. But 
if all that you think about in this Christendom is how you get a husband, then you have failed. Because those who have understood why they are following Christ, whether they get husband or not, they have made up their mind. It's, it's like uh, that, that they make uh, those Arab uh, Caribbean, they have this song. They say, goodbye world. Um, I, may, I may not work with you. I made up my mind to go God's way the, the rest of my life. I made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. He said, I am no longer with you. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye world. I am no longer with you. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. See, if you don't make a determination or, you know, determine in your mind that whether I get a child, if you are married and six years, seven years, there's no children. If you don't make up your mind that children or no children, Jesus is still Lord of my life and I will serve him faithful till I die. That childlessness can take you out of the feet of Jesus and you go follow, follow. You go and follow Prophet Moko, Prophet Momone, Prophet Intos, Prophet Nyadua. You follow them and you'll be, they'll be giving you sheer butter, anointing oil, anointing this, anointing that. And as we have learned in this ministry, the true power is not in the oil. The true power lies in the Holy Spirit coming here in your heart to take over, bearing his fruit. That is where the power lies. The word of Christ, he says, is power and is spirit. It's not in oil. It's not in any salty water. Unless the Holy Spirit gives that divine directives, there is nothing in it. There is absolutely nothing in it the cares of this world. What do you care about so much? What are you thinking about lately? The deceitfulness of riches. You know, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't pray that God should make us prosper. Because uh, Apostle John, when he was praying in 1 John, he said, I wish above all things that you will prosper even as your soul prospereth. But prosperity is not having cars and building mansions and having 10, maybe 7 people that will be at your uh, beg and call. No. The one who is blessed is the one the Lord does not impute iniquity. The one who is truly blessed by God is the one the Lord has forgiven and blotted away their sins. The one who is blessed is the one who is able to hear from God daily. They are the one blessed and favored. Blessing is not in houses. Blessing is not in cars. Blessing is not having 10, ten children or 4 children. Because to, to be honest with you, some people have enough uh, or more than enough or more than necessary uh, children and now the children have become burden on them. Some people have children who have become burden on them because as they got their children, the enemy has tempered with their children. And now I, 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 I heard of uh, one lady talking to me, say, three, a woman with three or two children, and none of them could walk. They are all paralyzed. They are like, they cannot walk. They are crippled. And so these children, I would say, have become a burden to this woman. And I bet when she got married, she was crying, please, God, don't let it be too long. Let me have children. And now this is a cross she must carry. And so those who are in Christ because they need children, please, you must understand and condition your mind well. Because having the children also comes with other responsibilities. You must condition your mind to take all, take all, to accept all. Many have children that have become so rebellious to the point that they are armed robbers. His own children, her own children have turned armed robbers. They are weed smokers. They smoke weed. They inject themselves with heroin and nothing is stopping them from coming out of the world. And this has become a burden to such people or that woman. And there are people that are, are running helter skelter. They are running to and fro, praying, seeking God. I want children, know, I want children, know. but they are not seeking the kingdom of God first. 
many have turned to false prophets and now their souls are tied into hellfire, heading there because of this curse of the world. I want children or else my marriage is collapsing. What about putting your, your mind, everything on God and having faith that he's able to keep that marriage till he blesses you with a child? What about that? The condition of the heart is what we are talking about this morning. What condition, on what grounds did you receive the holiness message? On what grounds did you receive righteousness message? And how are you taking it? And how do you understand it? And how are you running along with it? He says that they become unfruitful because of the deceitfulness of riches, because of the cares of this world. In fact, all those things choke the word out of them. They hear, Jesus says, Jesus is able to do this. It's like that rich man that was wearing, you know, tattered clothes, clothes that really wasn't looking nice. And he went to, he went, he's, he's doing street, uh, street evangelism. And then uh, this rich man was standing on, on the upper roof of, of his uh, uh, two-story building. And then the man uh, at the gate said, please come to Jesus. He will make you as he has made me. And that man is we wearing uh, some tattered clothes and some, you know, bogus sandals. And the rich man looked down and said, you want me to come Jesus so that he will make me as wretched as you are looking? He said, yes. He said, take your Jesus, I will take my riches. <laughs> you take your Jesus, I will take my riches because I don't want to be like you. Hallelujah. The Lord God did not call us to make us look wretched, but to glorify us. But the condition of your mind, how prepared you are and how you perceive the word of God shows in your appearance, shows in everything that is in your life. What is the condition of your heart today? And the last one is the seed that fell on good ground. The seed that fell on good ground. This morning, it is my prayer that that heart of yours is like that of the good ground. That you have made up your mind, whether you get married or not, whether your children turn to God or not, Nothing will sway you from the love of Christ. You will be convinced without reasonable doubt. You will not have that double mind. Jumping from one prayer line to another. Jumping from one ministry to another. Jumping from this to another. But you will set your mind on Christ alone. You say, I have made up my mind. Whether I get this situation solved or not, I have made up my mind. I am going to bear fruit for the Lord. Because the Lord said that if, if his word remain in us, then we shall bear fruit. But any tree that does not bear fruit, he's going to cut it. Cut it and throw it into the fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Beloved, it is the desire of God and the Lord Jesus Christ that our, our heart will be that good ground that always take the word of God and gain understanding and bear fruit. Because fruition in Christ is our number one, uh, 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 key, is a, it's a key factor in our journey. Because if those disciples did not bear fruit, Christianity would have ended with them. When Christ died and rose and went back, it would have ended there. Peter went back into, into, into uh, fishing and the others went with him. But Jesus said, take care of my sheep. He called him about three times. He said, take, if you love me, take care of my sheep. And Peter accepted. Peter accepted the calling. The Bible says that day and night, they never cease to meet in the, in the temple, sharing the good news sharing things in common, doing things in love, understanding one another, spreading the good news. And the more they get killed, the more they get tortured, the more they went through all the persecution, the more they increased. 
many people, many Christians of today, we take offense in the word of God. We have become so sensitive. Hey, why is this lady talking to me like this? Why is she saying this and that? Yeah, why is it because I, I spoke to her about this or that? No. When the word of God comes and you are sober in spirit and you have opened yourself up for the word to correct you, to rebuke you, to train you, which God said, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, that the word of God is the inspired word of him and it's for training, it is for correcting, it is for rebuking, so that the man of God, you the woman of God, you the child of God, will be made perfect, will be able to come to the standard of the Lord Jesus. But today we want to hear the, the good part of the word and never the rebuking. Hey, that shall not judge. You cannot be judging like that. No, we don't judge. But when the word of God comes, it comes to convey the heart. We, we, we have to rebuke. If it needs rebuking, we have to rebuke. That doesn't mean I'm perfect than you. Because when God was giving me the word, he was rebuking me in my weakness. To get away, to get rid of that weakness in me. So the word of God, it comes for the one who is preaching. I am not perfect. Neither is your bishop or your prophet. None is above. But it trains us so that we can reach perfection. Paul said, it's not that I have attained the reward or I've, I've got it to the goal, but I strive forward. Hallelujah. Every day is a day that we have to strive forward. Every day should be a day that we condition our mind. Whether I get this or that, whatever revelation the Lord has given me, whatever the, the, the Lord has made me understand, whether it comes to fruition or not, nothing, nothing will take me away from the love of God. Nothing will take me away from serving God till I die. When I'm about to die, that will be the last word I, I will say, glorifying God, praising his name. I would like to see the angels of God ready to take my soul to the kingdom. And that, is a, that has been my prayer every day. I always tell the Lord, teach me to number my days so that I will gain the heart of wisdom. I don't want to be taken on a west. I never want to be taken away on a west. I want my heart to be ready to be conditioned and always I'm doing check and balances in my life. Beloved, don't let a day go by without you sitting down when you're about to sleep. Take a stock of your life. What did I do in the morning? What did I do in the afternoon? What did I do in the evening? Did I accomplish or did I do as the Lord Jesus Christ commissioned me to do? And if you didn't, you plead for mercy. And you ask the Holy Spirit to strengthen you to do that which you've been called to do. Any tree which does not bear fruit will be cut off. We don't want to be that like the Pharisees, ever hearing but never understanding, ever seeing but never really coming to the full sight of it. May the Lord help us. May the Lord Jesus help us to overcome any condition in our heart that is making, and the seed is the word of God. Any condition in our heart that is making the word of God unbearable, that is making the word of God uncomfortable within us, that is making the word of God not to germinate proper and bear fruit. May the word or may the Holy Spirit help us take away all those conditions from our heart so that we will have a fertile ground. Our heart will become a fertile ground. Why is the Lord using the heart? Because the heart of man is desperately wicked. Before anybody takes an action, it has already happened in the heart. And the mind takes over and the body do action. I pray the Holy Spirit will arrest all of us, our heart, and condition it to make the word that we receive day and night to germinate. May God help you. May God help me. May God help all the genuine Christians who have made up their mind that they are seeking the truth, that they want to walk in the truth and nothing but the truth. 
so that our toil will never be in vain. Our sweat in this Christendom will never be in vain. So that we will work it to the full, to the latter, where the Lord will say, well done, good and faithful servant. God bless you. Amen.